Um, what do you think of, or, or what is the current state of the war in Ukraine from um, your perspective as a military analyst? Wow. <laughs> um, let's do a sort of grand strategic look at it first. Um, okay. The the West uh, saw how effective uh, Ukraine was at kicking Russia out of 15,000 square kilometers around Kharkiv last year and thought, right, uh, and President Zelensky said, I can do the same. I can liberate my country. Give me the weapons. Give me the training. Give me the money and I'll do it. And largely that spring offensive that uh, the West provided a shopping list of stuff for President Zelensky. There were training programs in the US, the UK and elsewhere. Um, but without getting too much of the detail, if you look at this five months in, has the front line moved significantly despite tens of thousands of casualties, arguably hundreds of thousands, uh, a lot of kit and equipment going, uh, getting destroyed? Arguably, no, it hasn't. And that is incredibly disappointing. Um, now, for President Zelensky, uh, at the start of this war, um, the President Zelensky wanted to liberate his country, but the West actually just wanted to make sure that Russia didn't uh, continue, gain momentum and suddenly march on Europe. Because, um, yeah, that might sound melodramatic, but two successive world wars started like that. Um, and therefore, the West was really worried that this might suddenly erupt into a, a European conflict. So it was aligned with Ukraine. If you won the clock forward to today, even though the front lines haven't moved, the President Zelensky's objectives haven't changed. From a West perspective, Russia is no longer the threat that it once was. Yes, President Putin's ambitions probably haven't changed, but his military has been badly mutilated. Um, if it's true, they've lost over 2,000 main battle tanks. And it's easy to say they had literally 13 or 14,000 before. That's not strictly true. A lot of those were in storage. They were old Second World War tanks. If you look at the, the modern tanks they've lost, they've lost a huge amount of their military capability. They've lost a huge number of their experienced soldiers. So from a West perspective, Russia is no longer the threat it was. And therefore, in a way, it's now shifting its uh, tension because it's got its own domestic priorities. It's got, you know, we're both recovering, both our nations recovering from COVID for, with huge borrowings, with cost of living crisis, energy crisis. And now with the war in Israel as well, distracting. I think from a strategic perspective, I think this is a really difficult time for President Zelensky because, and we can get into it if you like, but one of the ways this could end would be a compromise. In other words, Zelensky gives up some of his land and it might be that the West is actually very happy with that because it just stops the war. But we can unpick that a bit if you like. That's the strategic level. If we go on to the tactical level, there are three main areas of fighting. The danger of trivializing this, I apologize to viewers, but in the interest of brevity, there's fighting across around Bakhmut to the east um, Donbass. Bakhmut is no real strategic importance, but symbolically vital. Russia lost 30,000 soldiers taking it. Admittedly, a lot of those were convicts and the Wagner group, but it was still huge casualties. And now at Avdivka, which is near Bakhmut, Russia is still throwing wave upon wave upon wave of soldiers across open ground, taking 40 to 70% casualties. Um, and that's going to continue because it looks like Russia's spe special military operation is about securing the Donbass. The second area of importance is the uh, down to the east of Zaporizhia, where Ukraine wants to punch through to the coast, but Russia used the time available before Ukraine uh, came across the start line to prepare three big lines of defences, ditches, dragon's teeth, those big one metre tall concrete things, and an extensive minefield. And despite five months of fighting, Ukraine's only got about 15 kilometres through that and hasn't made a breakthrough. And the third area is to the west, it's the Dnipro River, um, if you recall, the Karkovka Dam was blown by the Russians to protect that flank. Massive flood water, mud, everything. But now several months have gone by, the, the flood water has subsided, the ground is settled again. And now there's reports that Ukraine has actually made its way across the river, despite the fact all the bridges are blown. And if, big if, if it managed to consolidate that, 
that gets behind all the Russian defences, and that could be really significant. But away from those three areas, yes, there's been lots of bombings, missiles, drone attacks, attacks against the Black Sea Fleet. We could talk about all of that, but that would be my sort of overall assessment of where we are. Hey guys, it's the Editor Guy here. And before you go, consider joining the Telegram channel and gain news from Ukraine, Israel, and world events around the world. First, all you have to do is scroll down to the description below. Click on the Telegram link and you'll have access to all news around the world. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy it. See ya.